So I don't really mean to beat a dead horse, but this goes back to what we were talking about in the last video regarding AMD stock in general, not just CPU stock, and I'm not talking about like their stock price, I'm talking about inventory levels regarding GPUs and CPUs. So right now, you can't really buy anything Zen 3 related, at least on sites that I typically use, like Amazon and Newegg. That stuff has been sold out since day one, practically. RDNA 2 graphics cards, like the 6800, 6800 XT, and 60, well, 6900 XT hasn't been released yet. But anyway, the, the two lower end cards, you can't buy, you couldn't buy. If you did get to buy one, congratulations, you were like one of maybe 20 people that I could confirm actually was able to buy one, which is significantly less than the number of people who bought one on day one from NVIDIA. And that's saying something because NVIDIA's launch still sucked, okay? It was still awful, but at least NVIDIA Founders Edition cards were in stock in pretty, I mean, I don't want to say decent numbers, but you could go to Micro Center and, and be, you know, 20th in line and probably not sweat at least buying an RTX 3070. And we're just talking about Founders Edition cards. We're not talking about AIBs that were released pr pretty much on the same day. We're not talking about those. We're talking about just the cards that the companies themselves, the manufacturers of the chips themselves are selling. So NVIDIA's are the Founders Edition, AMD's are the reference cards. You guys saw those in our reviews. That's all we're comparing here, apples to apples. But there's an important lesson to be learned here, uh, and I think that this more or less reflects on the outlook of companies as a whole that you should have, uh, and how, how you shouldn't necessarily put all of your faith and hope into the words of some people who happen to work at said company. So we're gonna talk about that in this video, or stay with me. If you're looking for a sleek and efficient AIO for your next PC, check out Be Quiet's Pure Loop AIO lineup. Choose between four popular sizes that all sport Pure Wings 2 fans, and enjoy qualities like dedicated fill ports and decoupled pumps for minimal vibration and maximum aesthetic at the block. Learn more about Be Quiet Pure Loop AIOs below. So let's get this out of the way. A tweet from a gentleman named Andre Elijah says, Welp, not being able to pick up a 3090 today means my work is going to be f***ed for the next little bit. Can they at least release a new Quadro card so I can get my work done? $10 says AMD will be a paper launch too. And this is back in September, right, of this year, so a couple months ago. And uh, it's kind of weird he just brought this up out of nowhere, just a kind of a, a, you know, statement of opinion, but it ended up being fact. I think most of us know uh, at this point that these cards were never in great supply. And that's the definition essentially of a paper launch when you're saying, hey, these cards are available, but then none are actually available. All you're making available is the launch itself, hence the paper launch reference. Anyway, Frank Azor here says, I look forward to taking your $10. Now, for those of you who do not know, Frank Azor is the chief architect of gaming solutions. I know that's cut off the screen here. I'll go ahead and open it up in a different panel here. You can see uh, Frank Azor is the chief architect of gaming solutions and marketing at AMD, co-founder of Alienware, Boater, Gamer, blah, 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 blah. Okay, anyway, chief architect of gaming solutions and marketing at AMD. Okay, that's the important part, right? Basically, chief, chief architect of marketing is the part specifically that I wanna home in on. So this dude's in charge of quite a bit that goes on behind the scenes at AMD. And uh, he's in charge of essentially the public image of the company, uh, what you should be expecting, what you should be anticipating in, in, in regards to performance, all of that. He kind of oversees a lot of that as the person in charge of marketing, or at least a, a section of marketing in the company. And when you make a statement like this, I mean, <laughs> people are gonna notice. And you can see he's got 56 retweets, 77 quoted tweets, 757 likes. I mean, that's no slouch, that's pretty good engagement there. And for somebody that only has uh, 11,000, I mean, that's still a lot of followers, but that's, you know, it's not a, a metric crap ton. That's pretty good engagement. So it tells me that people were definitely paying attention to this one. And um, yeah, I gotta say, Frank, it didn't really age well. I sincerely hope Frank decided to pay this guy 10 bucks. And if he didn't pay him $10, at least donate the 10 bucks to charity or make it $100, make it $1,000, who cares? Do something, okay, to show that you we're wrong, admit defeat, because you were clearly wrong here. And actually a vast majority of these tweets are pointing out just that. Hey, um, <laughs> this is uh, not true. This ended up not being true. And you owe this dude $10. Say, so pay your bet right there, pay your bet. Uh, hello, Frank, you should pay now. Just a good mint, good mint advice. You should pay now, charity of my choice. I think you need to pay the $10. I mean, this is pretty much like, you can't win this one, okay? You, you lost. But what, here's the problem, okay? Are you going to 
actually admit defeat here because if you do, then that ruins your credibility as the head of marketing or head of whatever marketing division you are in AMD. That's not a good look for you. It's also not a good look for your company. So there's a lot on the line there. Uh, but my intention is not to pick on Frank, you know, particularly. Obviously, he is the his tweets more or less are the topic of today's video. But uh, th this is one of those things where, you know, you you kind of did this to yourself because you know people are following you but because of your title at the company. You know you have a voice and the people are looking up to you for uh, for advice and for for you know future outlook things of that. That sort. But uh, I mean, he seems like a cool guy on the service. I don't think his intention was to lie. He says, you know, and this was the day before the launch here. To all of you camping out at retailers tonight for either of these cards, please stay safe and warm. This was the day before the launch. Thank you for your support. You're amazing. That's a cool tweet. You know, it sounds like a cool guy there. But then, then Frank, you go, you go and do this. And, and Frank, this is, this is what I don't, I don't, I don't understand this. No, I'm not a marketing expert. I do have some experience in marketing, but I am definitely not the head of marketing of a huge multi-billion dollar company, all right? You would think that somebody who was in that position would know that what 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 you're seeing here, right? This right here is just distasteful. Um, I'm not sure how else to put it. It's frankly just, uh, it's, it's just out of touch because even if we ignore the fact that you work directly with said company, even if we assume that you were playing by the same rules as everyone else when it came to getting these cards, which I have my doubts and so is everyone else, and that's part of the problem. We also have to assume that this is, I mean, are you, do you think this is like, like representative of everyone's experience? Like this is a, a single anecdotal reference to a reference card being purchased. That doesn't say much at all. I mean, if I went by just what I saw with people buying them, well, in, in my eyes then, everyone bought one, right? But then you have to consider the number of people, the sheer number of people who tried, who tried on day one, the people who stood in line for hours outside, sometimes even days, to, to buy one of these cards only to find out that the store in question only had like two or three in stock. Like, what kind of crap is that? But yeah, this is supposed to make us all feel better. The fact that uh, the head of marketing at AMD was able to buy said card. Um, that's not, that's not a good way to market your product, my man. I'm just going to say it. I'm sorry. I, I, I have to call you out here just because you decided to make it public. I mean, the, the, I can't really ignore it. It's a bad look. It, it really is. It's a bad look. I think that this should be addressed. He should acknowledge at least the fact that, uh, this was poorly approached. Now to his defense, after people called him out, and there were quite a number of people who did this, Frank said that he was just trying to show people that AMD.com was working for orders right back then at that time when it still had stock, uh, but required refreshing to get it through. Intent was to help. But again, it's all about perception here and about how you kind of set things up to begin with when you make bets like the one we saw earlier where you're, you know, basically telling somebody that there will be plenty of stock and that it won't be a paper launch or even just more stock again than NVIDIA. That's all you really needed to do just to not be cast in the, you know, in the same light as NVIDIA. Uh, when you don't come anywhere close to that, at least when it appears like on the surface, you can't just, the way you worded that tweet afterwards about how, oh, I was able to buy one. That's like, you're trying to justify what you said a few days ago and that just doesn't work, especially when the vast, vast majority of people can no longer buy one or had no chance to buy one in the first place because they weren't a part of the team radon thing. What, what, what was it called? Yeah, team radon early purchase alert special, folks. <laughs> so yeah, this tweet, uh, this tweet did not age well and I hope that Frank acknowledges it. Look, I don't expect this video really to change anyone's minds about the paper launch itself. Yeah, there were some people defending AMD saying, well, this is only the reference card here. That this, you know, you can't compare it to Nvidia's launch when Nvidia had AIB cards that were also available on day one. And that's why I, again, in the beginning of the video, tried to juxtapose the two offerings directly from the two companies in question, right? The Nvidia Founders Edition cards, which are technically non-referenced, they're AIB cards, and the reference cards themselves with the triple fan design that you saw in our previous review for the 60, 160, 100 XT, uh, from AMD, right? Those are really as, as close to apples, to apples as we can get. And you gotta think of it this way too. Assuming Frank had any remaining credibility when it came to discussing inventory and supply levels pre-launch, if he had high hopes in the AIB side of things, don't you think he would be hinting at that? I mean, he had the balls, the gonads to say, I look forward to taking your $10 with regards to AMD, the AMD launch in general. But if, if he was mainly referencing the AIB side of things, don't you think he would probably hint at that 
right? And he hasn't even addressed, he hasn't addressed really much at all since this tweet. And um, that tells me that, yeah, there's not much to look forward to. I hate to say it, but uh, just what it seems like. So I sincerely hope you've enjoyed this video and I sincerely hope that inventory levels Resurge. I hope they come back at some point. I hope that um, around November 25th this year we see decent AIB supply, although I have my doubts. I have my my sources. Okay, obviously I, I speak to these AIBs directly, and a lot of them are indicating that um, stock is going to suck. So I don't know really how else to put that without revealing too much and pissing off them. That's obviously not my end goal, but I want to tell you as much as I can to kind of prepare you. It ain't going to be good, okay? If I thought it was going to be good, this, this I wouldn't even make this video. Uh, but I, I have every expectation that this AIB launch will be identical to, if not worse than, the NVIDIA AIB launch, which there has happened around the same time as the Founders Edition launch, et cetera, et cetera. So you, you can only, you know... <sighs> I can only say so much again without without really pissing off the other side of the coin here, um, and I'm I'm trying to kind of be that middleman without people wanting to kill the messenger. But anyway, it is not looking great. Um, I'm struggling to even get samples allocated. That's when you know it's bad. Uh, when companies that used to send you samples all the time are not really sure if you're going to be able to get one day one. Um, that's not me saying that I'm pissed. I'm not going to get one. Oh, he's, he's just, uh, whatever people are going to say. He's, he's, you know, into it for himself. He's selfish, blah, blah, blah. I, it's not about that. Okay. It's not, it's not about receiving a sample or not. We can get one at some point. Okay. And, and chances are when we can get one ourselves when we can go out and buy one, that's when you can too. That's when the review will be relevant anyway. So that, that, that timing actually works out. I'm not bitter about that at all. It's just, it's an indication of supply when a company that is typically sending you things for review, right? They expect work for this stuff. We're not just getting it for free just because of who we are. We, we're expected to work for these things uh, and, and to use them multiple times in multiple videos, build videos, reviews, et cetera. Um, when we're not getting those all of a sudden now when it's just like cut off, that tells me that they don't have enough to send and uh, they'd rather get those cards into the hands of actual buyers and they'd rather just send a couple or a few cards to a few of the top media out there which makes sense i get that no one's no one's faulting them for doing that but it tells me as the smaller creator that um there aren't as many of these gpus to go around as we initially thought and remember aibs rely on the distribution of gpus from amd from tsmc more specifically and you can only work with what you have so <laughs> if the reference model launch is any indication of aib supply it ain't going to be good. So just a heads up there. If you guys want to subscribe, I'd appreciate that. Consider clicking the like button. Click that bell notification icon, and I will catch you in the next one. My name is Greg. Thanks for, what did I say? My name is Greg? That's what I meant to say. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.